Mark Hobson was born at Many Gates Maternity Hospital in Wakefield, West Riding of Yorkshire, on September 2, 1969. The first family home was in Norton Street, Wakefield, where Hobson grew up with his parents Peter and Sandra and his two sisters, Melanie and Leslie. They then moved to Woodhouse Road, East Moor. Hobson's father was a coal miner who had started his career at Walton Colliery in 1958, and later become deputy and overmanager at the city's Park Hill Colliery until its closure in 1982. The family then moved to the Selby area where Hobson's father took work at a local coal field. Hobson's mother worked as a machinist. Hobson's childhood was described by his contemporaries as happy and stable. He attended Heathview Primary School in East Moor, Wakefield, and Stainer High School and Braden High School, Selby. One of his teachers recalled him as very well behaved, so average and ordinary that he was almost anonymous. In 1991 Hobson moved in with his childhood sweetheart and her two children from another relationship. They married in 1993 after the birth of their daughter. Hobson worked at Drax Power Station and was also a landscape gardener. His wife described him as the perfect husband. In 1998 Hobson registered as a nightclub doorman and began working at Gons Nightclub in Marketplace, Selby. On New Year's Day 1999, he walked out on his family without giving a reason and began using cannabis and drinking heavily. His wife said, there was no one else involved, he just didn't want married life anymore. It was bizarre. I couldn't believe it. He turned to pot and drinking heavily. He never drank when we were married but now he got out of his face. He became like a zombie. His life just went completely off the rails. During the evening of July 10, 2004, he killed his girlfriend Claire Sanderson, 27, in the flat they shared on Millfield Drive, Campbell's Fourth. She was struck on the head 17 times with a hammer and strangled, after which Hobson wrapped her body in bags. A plastic bag had also been placed over her head. Subsequent forensic analysis determined that an area of the flat had been cleaned with bleach but Claire had been first attacked in the living room and then taken into the bathroom. There was no evidence of recent sexual activity. On July 17, he telephoned Sanderson's twin sister Diane and told her Claire was ill with glandular fever and wanted her to visit. When Diane arrived at the flat that evening she too was beaten with a hammer after being tortured with a disposable razor and scissors and sexually assaulted. She had been hugged tight and her left nipple was completely bitten off. Police believe Hobson may have eaten it. The cause of her death was determined to be strangulation. Her head was also covered with a plastic bag and ligatures were found on her wrists, ankles, and neck. Her pubic hair had been shaved and she had been sexually assaulted. That same evening Diane's boyfriend, Ian, rang her mobile to find why she had not turned up at a pub as previously arranged. Hobson answered the phone, and was forced to make up a story about the twin's father, George, having suffered a heart attack. He then calmly arranged to meet Ian Harrison, at the Cricketer's Arms in Selby and, within two hours of Diane's death, they were drinking together, Hobson then invited him back to the flat. Ian immediately noticed a nasty smell in the flat that of a decomposing body but Hobson fought him off with an excuse about the drains being blocked. Ian also noticed blood stains on the sofa, which Hobson explained as Claire's women's problems. Hobson even offered to let Ian sleep on the sofa for the night, despite the twins' bodies being in a bedroom upstairs. When Mr. Harrison visited the toilet Hobson stood directly behind him, to ensure he did not go into the bedroom. Ian left, still worried about his girlfriend but it was not until he visited the Sanderson's family home shortly after 7 a.m. the next morning and George Sanderson opened the door that it dawned on him that something was wrong. On Sunday July 18, 2004, the twins' mutilated bodies were discovered by Diane's boyfriend, Ian Harrison, and the girl's father George. Escaping the house just before Ian turned up, Hobson asked his mom for a lift to the hospital to visit Claire, who he said had been in an accident his mom unwittingly aiding his escape plan. 25 miles away, in the village of Strensel, Hobson wandered into the house of an elderly couple, James and Joan Britton, both aged 80. He battered James with his walking stick, then set about Joan, with her walking stick, 
Then as she lay on the floor Hobson plunged a kitchen knife into Mrs. Britton's back with such a force that the blade went straight through his defense a less elderly victim and was only stopped when the blade hit the floor beneath. The knife broke, and the blade was still inside Mrs. Britton's body when she was discovered around 11.15 a.m. Hobson then went through the house, presumably looking for money, but leaving a trail of fingerprints. While processing the crime scene at Hobson's home, the police found incriminating evidence including a shopping list which confirmed the premeditated nature of the twins' murders. On the list was big bin liners, tape, tie wraps, fly spray and air freshener along with a list of people who were believed to be potential targets. These included the twins' parents and Mark's ex-wife Kay whom he blamed for taking his daughter away from him. On July 25, 2004, Hobson spent the next seven days living in the woods but was suffering due to lack of water. He was desperate, so despite the risk of being caught, he walked into a petrol station in the village of Shipton by Bra, near York, to buy cigarette papers, matches and water. The garage owner recognized Hobson immediately, after extensive media coverage and a national manhunt, and called police. Within minutes police with police dogs were on the scene, and Hobson was arrested. When he was found Hobson told police I'm a fucking murderer aren't I? Shortly before the court case, Hobson was placed into solitary confinement at HMP Wakefield, for three months after attacking Ian Huntley, a former school caretaker convicted of murdering two female pupils at a Cambridgeshire school, and scalding him with a bucket of boiling water. A prison service spokesman said that, due to the nature of high security prisoners, it's impossible to prevent incidents of this nature occasionally happening. He was sentenced to life imprisonment on May 27, 2005. The court was also told that Hobson had stabbed a love rival five times in the chest in a daylight attack in front of shoppers in Selby in 2002, leaving him with a punctured lung. Hobson had admitted grievous bodily harm and avoided a prison sentence, instead receiving a community punishment. This lenient sentence came under much criticism in the light of Hobson's later offending. Hobson lodged an appeal to a lower minimum sentence set, claiming that he should have been given a more lenient sentence because he had admitted all four murders at the earliest opportunity. He also backed up his case with a suggestion that no other murderer who admitted their crimes at the first opportunity had ever been recommended for lifelong imprisonment. This was not true, as a similar recommendation had been imposed on child killers Timothy Morses and Brett Tyler in 1996 even though they had admitted their crimes at the earliest opportunity. The appeal was turned down by the appeal court after Lord Phillips agreed with the trial judge's recommendation, saying that his opinion that Hobson should never be released was inevitable, regardless of a guilty plea, as the murders had been so horrific. In January 2006, letters were released from Wakefield Prison where Hobson blamed alcohol for his killing spree. It had been revealed at Hobson's trial that he was an alcoholic who regularly drank as many as 20 pints a day. He was addicted to heroin and also used other drugs. In February 2007, some 15 months after Hobson's failed appeal, the European Court of Justice began a review of lifelong imprisonment to determine whether such sentences amounted to a violation of human rights. If the court outlaws lifelong imprisonment, Hobson and all other prisoners serving such sentences would have their cases called back to court for a new minimum term to be set. Mark Hobson, 35, had earlier admitted the murders of his girlfriend Claire Sanderson, 27, and her sister Diane at his flat in Campbell's Fourth. He also admitted killing James and Joan Britton at their home near York. At Leeds Crown Court, Mr. Justice Grigson said, the enormity of what you have done is beyond words. Sentencing Hobson to life in prison with a whole life tariff, he said, the damage you've done is incalculable. You not only destroyed the lives of your victims, but you devastated the lives of those who loved them. As the sentence was read out, the twins' mother, Jacqueline Sanderson, stood up in the public gallery and shouted, Rot in hell! After the trial, Mrs. Sanderson and her husband George issued a statement in which they ask, How could anyone be such an animal? They continue, Claire and Diane did not deserve to die such horrid deaths, both ending up naked, with a plastic bag over Diane's head and Claire inside a black bag. Speaking outside the court, Detective Superintendent Javed Ali, who led the hunt for Hobson, said, No one who has heard the detail of these horrific crimes can be surprised at the severity of today's sentence. 
I believe it is totally right and fitting that Mark Hobson is never released from prison. For me, today brings about a conclusion to the most horrendous case I have had to deal with in my 22 years police service. But for the families and loved ones the victims have left behind, today does not bring about closure. My thoughts are with them and I can only hope they gain some comfort from the sentence. The sisters' bodies were found on July 18th last year in the flat in Campbell's Fourth. The bodies of Mr. Britton, an 80-year-old former Spitfire pilot, and his 82-year-old wife, were found dead by neighbors on the same day, 25 miles away in the village of Strensel. The judge said Hobson had an abusive relationship with Claire Sanderson. And when you tired of her, you transferred your attention to her sister, Diane, he told the court on Friday. As Claire stood in your way, you murdered her. In my opinion, that was a premeditated act. You also determined to lure Diane to your home and kill her there and then to use her for your own sexual gratification before killing her and on July 10th you did just that. You battered Claire with a hammer in as brutal and callous a way as is possible to imagine before placing a plastic bag over her head and, having killed her, you wrapped her body in a bin bag. On July 17th you succeeded in luring Diane to your home. It is plain at your hands she suffered not only terror and pain but sexual harm before she died. He is currently imprisoned at Prison Wakefield where Hannibal the cannibal Robert Maudsley is also spending the rest of his life. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching. And if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.